Alright guys, it's Wendy, but we're back out here at the old Dodge. Get me some of them nifty 18 volt tools like I see everybody using. With a lifetime guarantee, yeah. Well, there's a wind that shot an empty brick line. Nobody's gonna count. If you're the missing nigga season, I'm the bring a stand up in my mouth and you can. So, Alright, guys, it's Wendy. But we're back out here at the old Dodge. You know, in the last video, we got this thing pressure washed up so it's not so greasy and grimy. And uh, what I gotta do is I gotta get this alternator off of here. So I'm gonna have to unhook the wires, pull this uh, bolt out of here, and then take this in on the bench and we're gonna have to drill out the adjustment bolt because the guy I bought it from broke it off trying to adjust the belt. So we're going to get that off of there and when we get that off of there underneath this is the fuel pump and the fuel pump is bad because if you look at this when you run it it fills up with fuel and then after it sets it goes back away and it's not going into the oil. Boy it's windy. Hot damn! It is windy out here guys. And unfortunately, this big old girl won't fit in my garage, so I'm going to have to work on it out here. But it's nice and warm today, even though it's windy. Hope you can hear me. Have I told you that it's windy yet? <laughs> anyway, we're going to work on this thing. I'll try to show you what I do. So come along for the ride. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, well, I don't know how well you can see there, but... Anyway, or hear me because of the wind, but we're going to take off that bolt there and we got to loosen this one up down here. And uh, looks like that must be a 916. We just want to loosen this. And we already know this guy broke this bolt off over here. So that tells me that these bolts are kind of stuck maybe. So we're just going to kind of work this around a little bit and try to get it unstuck so that we don't break it off either. So we're just going to give it some tugs here. Hopefully we can get this taken care of. Oh boy, that sucker's really tight. That one's loose. This one down here is not so loose. Let's see if I can get both hands on it here. I believe I'm going to get a socket and a breaker bar for that. But I don't want to, you know, I just kind of want to work it back and forth and try to loosen it up. So, all right, show you more. Okay. All right, so we got a cheater pipe. We got the little 3 8 breaker bar with a 916 socket on it. We're going to put that on there and slip this on here. We're just going to kind of work that. I don't want to just break it off, you know what I mean? Okay, she moved a little, so that's good. So... Let's move it back the other way just a little bit. Yeah, man. Whoop, well, that's a good thing that it's loose, but that's bad. Now I think we can take our wrench. And like I said, I don't want to take this all the way out because I think it'll leak fluid if I take it all the way out. But I just want to loosen it up um, so that that bracket that you adjust the alternator with. There, see now this this bracket here will move. You probably can't see that actually. This is the bracket I'm talking about. So now, see it'll move up and down. So now we can take this bolt out and take these wires loose back here. And I took a picture of this to remit so you know which color wire goes where because I want to put it back the same way. So, all right, I'm going to get this off here, and then we'll take it over to the bench, and we'll see if we can drill out that broken off stud. Okay, so we got the alternator sitting in here at the workbench, and this is the bolt 
that it's broken off. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to run a series of drill bits in here. That one being the first one, then we'll graduate up a little bigger and then a little bigger. And my idea is we get it, hopefully at this point, when we get this one in there, I can take an easy out and get it out. If not, we're going to have to drill it all the way and then we will uh, use a tap and clean up the threads. But the first thing I'm going to do is take a little center punch and punch a little hole in that. All right, show you more. Now all we're wanting to do with this center punch is make a little in the try to get it in the center of this broken off bolt and just tap a little groove in or a little uh, dent in it, if you will, I guess be the best way to call it. And see that you probably can't see that, but that puts a little dent in it. That way this first drill bit will fit right in there and drill. The thing is, is I got that over just a little too far to the edge, so let's back that over here a little and try it again. Yeah, that's better in the center, I think. Just going to make it a little deeper. Yeah. Now, that looks like that's in the center. So, all right, so let's put the drill, put the, the drill in the drill, the, yeah, the drill in the drill. Okay, and hopefully you can see this because I don't have a, any light over here around this. And hopefully this is not a real hard bolt. Looks like it's going to drill all right. That's what you don't want to do, is break a drill bit off. <laughs> Alright, show you more. Okay, so you can see my hole is down in there. I don't, I want to be careful and not go right through it because the, uh, Looks like the die, the uh, not the diode, but the uh, coil wire, the alternating coil that's all the way on the side is right under that. So I don't want to poke a hole or damage that because the guy I bought the truck from said it was charging until he went to adjust the belt because it was squealing. Now, how true all that is, I have no idea. But anyway, so let's let's keep drilling this out a little. I'm just gonna go slow. No sense in being in a big hurry here. Okay, so it's starting to go through. You can hear it. There, it's through. All right. Just didn't want to poke that hard. Okay, now let me see if I got an easy out that size. If I don't, we're going to have to drill it the next size bigger. Show you more. Well, like everything else, the one I need, of course, is uh, this 330 seconds, and it's not in the pack anymore. So, that tells me I don't got one. Let me dig around and see if I can find one in my junk box. don't have the right tools, guys, so, you know... Uh, you just have to make do with what you what we got. So I'm going to take this next drill bit and go in there right down inside that, and we're just going to make it a little bigger. Eventually, it'll get soft enough, or it'll get thin enough that you'll be able to go in there and get that out. So let's try this one. I'm just going to go slow. I don't want to get carried away with anything. We're getting close to the end of the bolt there. There it's through. Okay. Okay. Now, that thing is... Now I can get that other size easy out in there. And basically, I guess these are actually called screw extractors, but I always call them easy outs. 
but I think this one will go in there now. Yeah, it will. And basically, whenever I go to turn this, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey, the threads on the helicoil or the whatever this fancy terminology for the turning of this is the opposite. So as you try to back this out, it's going to tighten this up inside that and uh, theory, theoretically it will back the bolt out. Uh, and I've had pretty good luck with these in the past. I just don't want to get too much because put too much pressure on it. down in there but this is wanting to turn now. Probably got some there. Some metal shavings down in there, apparently. I tried to keep that blowed out. There. Did you see that thing fly out of there? All right, so let's see now if we can get this out of here. Uh, I don't want to get too carried away with it because I don't want to uh, make it worse. Hmm. Worst case scenario is we have to go get another alternator, but that's what we're going to have to do anyway, so why not try to fix it, you know. Let's see here. Well, let's keep working at it. I'm going to see if I can get this in the vise. All right, show you more. Well, I think what I'll do is take my punch. And um, before we get too carried away with that easy eye, let's see if we can loosen this up a little. Because I didn't get the whole drill just exactly centered. So I hate to drill anymore because then I'm going to get into the aluminum. Plus the less drilling we do, the less chance of getting those little pieces of metal down in that stator. Because that ain't going to be, it ain't going to like that. So let's just see what we can do here a little bit. Hey, it's like Puddin' said. If you don't get off your ass, you ain't never going to finish your project. And around here, we always got projects. And um, like I said, if we have to wind up buying another alternator, well, we were going to have to do it anyway. So let's see if we can fix this one. Yeah, let me tap this down in there a little. And again, don't get too carried away with it. And just, you know, let's see what we got now. Hmm. Still no, she's still no worky. All right, well, let's get a big, a little bigger drill bit, and let's go for that and see what happens. At this point, I'm not sure what else to do. That aluminum and steel, you know, that stuff corrodes. And I remember I had an old Buick, 76 Buick Riviera, and I tried to pull the distributor out of it to um, do some work to the distributor because it was in the back and you couldn't hardly get to it. And I wound up 
the first thing I did was twist the bolt off that was holding it into the engine block. Now, mind you, this car was only about eight years old. At, uh, yeah, about eight years old at that point. So then I knew I was committed. So I had so I drilled that out, got that bolt out of there, much like what we're doing here, and. Uh, I, the distributor was stuck. You couldn't move it at all, and I was trying to adjust the timing, like I said. And so I wound up beating and hammering, and all. before it was over, I had a come along hooked to that distributor because I broke the whole top of it off. And I finally got it up out of there, and I had to go buy another distributor. But anyway, so if you can't fix something, there's no sense in not trying because you might be able to fix it. I don't know what going on. I don't know what the going on. I Okay, so we're real thin there now. We're still not into the thread, so that's good. Let's tap this baby back down in there a little. See what we can do now with it. I don't want to break that easy out in there, that's for sure. That would suck. Well. I'd say that was a hardened bolt, that's for sure. There, we broke a little piece of it loose, so that's good. Those dissimilar metals just always are a booger bear for corrosion. Well, still no money. I'm getting little pieces of it out of there. Okay, I'm going to get a smaller punch and I'm going to work that down in there and try to get as much of it out as I can and then we'll run a tap through it. Alright, show you more. Okay, I think at this point what we're going to have to do is just go ahead and drill that out a little bigger. I've got a uh, I've got a 5 16 uh, bolt and a tap here. So let's go ahead and drill that a little bigger. And we'll just have to try to tap it out that way. What in the world's wrong with this crazy thing? I just put a battery in it. Can't be. It's on drill. Put it on a low. Okay, let's see how our tap goes down in there. And I don't got a T-handle for this. I used to have, but like so many things, I don't have any more. So we're going to use this and just try to move it a little at a time. Because it'll make threads. I like to kind of just work it back and forth a little. 
because we are cutting into aluminum here. We get down so far with this this tap, and we'll put a bottoming tap in to clean the threads all the way to the bottom. I don't believe she's hooked in there. The key is getting that hole drilled in the center, and um, we were real close. Yeah, she's freeing up now. And just don't be afraid to use several different sizes of drill bits because you don't want to try to just drill, you know, you got to start small and work big. Let's back this thing out of here and see what we got. Well, I can see right now we got a piece of the old thread right here. So that's what we were trying to get out of there. Okay. Well, let's give her a blow job. Okay. Well, I can definitely see the threads in there, but I can also see that there's a piece of of the old thread right there, yeah. So that's the kind of stuff we want to get out of there. So that's cool. Just take your time. Don't any big hurry. The truck wasn't running anyway. Ooh, fingers is locking up on me. Now I can see a little piece down in there that needs to go ahead and come on out. Let's see, where's our tap at? There we go. Yeah, one of them T handles is real nice for this. But I used it for something else one time that that it wasn't designed for and I think Either that or I loaned it to somebody. No, I think I'd actually broke it myself. You know, I like tools. Um, fortunately, I don't have a whole lot of them, but... Uh, I think it just went through another one of those threads that was stuck in there on them there. Let's back him out and see if we can find another one there. Oh, yeah, I see it. I see it. Right there it is. There's the little piece that came out. I don't know if it focuses on that or not, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, she's looking. Looking pretty good. I can still see a little piece right there. Yeah, and it's loose too. If I can get that out of there. Well, I believe we'll have her licked. You know me, just use whatever tools you can grab and use. If you're new to the channel, you'll know, you won't know this, but. I've talked about it before. My grandfather could rebuild a. He was transmission man. He could rebuild a 350 transmission with a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and a screwdriver because I've seen him do it. OK. 
Okay, I think we got that together. Let's see if we can go on down in here with this a little further. All right, I'm just going to keep working that back and forth, and I'll show you more. Okay, that's going to work. So what I did was I took, after I ran the other tap, this is the starter tap. You can see it's tapered, and then you use a bottoming tap, which will cut threads all the way to the bottom. And I just kept working it in there. I did put a little grease, just a uh, regular grease like I would grease ball, ball joints or U joints or something with, and put on here and worked that down in there once. And it, see, I can screw it in by hand or fingers now. So, okay. So I think we got that issue sort of kind of taken care of there. So let's go back out and see if we can get that fuel pump. Alright, show you more. Okay, on to part two here. Let's see. So um, what we gotta do is this is the one coming from the tank, so I'm gonna take that loose. And I'm gonna because it may have gas in it, hopefully it does. So uh, we're gonna shove this in there and tighten it down. Because it'll probably leak some, but I don't want it to leak everything out of it. If we can keep from it. Put this down on there. Well, she's she's loose. I don't know if she's gonna come off of there very good. There we go. Well, not much gas came out of it. Uh, definitely smells like gas. Okay, so we got that kind of screwed up out of the way. And this one's got a steel line coming out and then into this hose and into this filter, which we're going to change as well. Another one of those filters that came from the old time. Oh, yeah, that came loose. It's another one of them things I just kind of work them. I don't want to overdo it and twist that off. Gas lines sometimes can be like brake lines. And then, you know, you're a, you got a mess. Now, this is just taking it out of the brass fitting that is screwed into the, um, into the uh, fuel pump. And the new fuel pump doesn't come with that, so you're going to have to save that. Every time I get out here, here comes the leaf-sucking truck again. Good grief. Give me a break. Oh, no, that's the street sweeper. I tell you, we got the street cleanest streets in, in the nation here around here. So, But I guess at least we're getting something for our tax money. Some places don't get that. Anyway, let's keep working this off of here and talking louder over all the equipment going by. And I like these line wrenches too. These will help you out if you're not using a line wrench. Um, you know, I don't have a lot of tools, but I do have line wrenches. And they are handy dandies, baby. Oh, it must be kids getting out of school. Everybody's burning rubber over there at the stop line. Stop sign. I haven't taken a video of the stop sign for a while. I may have to do that. Okay. Should be just two bolts and that thing will come up out of there. That's the plan. And then we'll compare it with the new one we bought. $23 at O'Reilly's. Nope, I think that's not right. I bought that at Advanced Auto. Ugh. Yeah, we don't got no sponsor, so I'm buying parts wherever I can get them the cheapest. And Advanced was the cheapest. Yeah, it's peeing a little, little gas on the concrete, but... Hopefully the feds won't be after me on that. Uh, just went to the chiropractor this morning. Now I'm hanging over the 
clue to this old truck, so that ought to help. Okay, let's see if we can get them off of here. And here comes the old girl. So I'll take the bolts out of it. Set them up here on the radiator so those will get lost. And it looks like the gasket is not on here. Yeah, look at that. That's just pouring back out of there. And that's the that should be the one that has the check valve on it. So that's why all the fuel was running back to the tank. So let me get my scraper. We'll clean that up, a little brake clean. We'll compare this one with the new one, make sure it's going to be the same, and then we'll just reverse the procedure and put it on. All right, show you more. Do, 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 it's a long way. It's a long way. All right, let's see. Well, we're getting there. Yeah, just kind of take that and clean that old gasket off there. Now, I don't know why. Somebody somebody probably didn't get a, enough gaskets. I got three gaskets came in the kit with that new fuel pump. And I don't know why you'd want three or why you would send three. They're all the same that I can see. Unless, you know, the fuel pump... I mean, same housing for other vehicles, I get that, but the, this part has to match up to it, so why would you have all those different, uh, you know, it's beyond me. I'll just say it that way. Alright, now, here is the old fuel pump, and here is the new fuel pump. So, we want to compare them. And they look the same. I was wrong. This brass fitting does not have to come off here and go on this one. It's already on there. And then we want to look at the overall length of the of the pump shaft there. Make sure that it's going to be the same. And it appears that it is. And we'll look at it this direction too. So it looks like the same shape. So I think we should be pretty good to go. So we're going to put that one down here on the ground somewhere. Like that. And then we're going to get our Gorilla Booger, because you know I like my Gorilla Booger. And we are going to put some Gorilla Booger on, on this. Kind of like this. bolts after we wipe them off just a skosh because they're kind of nasty. Okay, that's sort of kind of good. All right, and we're going to take this fuel pump. I'm going to get this down in here. Oh, better put the gasket on it first. Let's just put a little grill of booger on both sides. How's that? I don't think it's going to hurt anything. But let's just do that. Don't have to get carried away with it. Let's put a little on there. My buddy Ernie's Collins always liked his Gorilla Booger. And uh, he taught me to like it too. So I'm just going to put some of that on there. It's amazing what you can learn from people. My grandfather and my dad and all my uncles and all of them's mechanics. Or all of them were, you know. And uh, I learned things from them as well, that uh, Ernie was my mentor in the military when I was in the Air Force, and he taught me a lot. He was an old B-52 uh, mechanic, and uh, so I learned a lot from him. 
course, we weren't working on planes. Uh, we were working on heavy equipment. Let's get that gasket back down there where you're supposed to be. Oops. If you can get them started, depending on where the camshaft is at at this point, it may not want to fit in there. It feels like it don't go in there straight. But what you've got to remember is that when you tighten it down, it'll pull it down. So, where is my socket? Well, that thing needs to go on there. What in the world? My Gorilla Booger lid is not working. Okay. Alright. Let's see if we can get that started a little bit there. Feels like it started, so we'll see. Don't want to force it if you want to cross thread it or some crazy thing like that. Trust me, I've done it. Sounds like it's going to rain. I hope not, because we're out here in the driveway, baby. This is what you call, sh sh well, I don't want to call it shade tree fixing. I guess this is driveway fixing. At least I've got a concrete driveway. Didn't used to have that. See how that's kind of pulling it over? You just got to kind of work with it because you don't want to force it in there now. In there and done that. I'm telling you, I got the t shirt. Snug that up a little on each side. Oops. Alright, there's that. Now, let's put our supply line back on from the tank. Or our, yeah, I guess that would be the supply line. Feed line? I don't know. Stick a comment down below and you tell me what you call it. I don't know. I don't know, but I've been told. All right. Oh, look that up good. Okay. Now let's see about getting this little duker on there. Well, you guys are in the way. We're working over here. Okay. We want to get that. Probably can't see nothing but the side of my face. Yeah, but didn't think about that. Uh, just got to kind of feel it. I can't really see it too good. Now we're going to have to wipe off my hands. I can't get down in there for some reason. Hmm, yeah, that, maybe that'll help. I don't know. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Let's wipe this off a little. Well, you guys are just in the damn way. There, you come over here. Let's try that. That probably won't work either. Now you can see good, but I don't know if I can get my hands in here. Yep, I'm going to have to move you because I can't get down. Alright, show you more. Okay, well at this point, I got it put on there, so at this point we need to change this out with a clean new one. Um, this was a Taiwanese-made one, so um, got that, like I said, up there at the old-time tractor show thingy, Majabi. 
whatever that was this summer I went to. Oh, and of course that one don't have. It's got them Ford clips. All right, let me get a pair of gotta get a pair of uh, pliers. Hold on. All right, got me some pliers here. Let's see what we can do, even if it's wrong. I'd say that's been on there since Hector was a pup. And Hector's quite old by now. Hmm, goodness. <sighs> there ain't no way. All right. This one off of there. Actually, we just slide it down a little. Let's see if we can get it off there. That's another thing. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that one's uh, that one's pretty dirty on the inside, but not too bad, really, compared. All right. Now that one's on the ground now. All right. Okay. So this says, to the carburetor. So we're going to put it here. And I don't know. These may be the ones that people don't like to use. But that's what I got. So that's what I'm using. Oh, there we go. Like that. This. Alright. Now, what I don't like is the way this kind of sets down in there. It's kind of. Ain't no bracket or nothing holding that. I don't know. It's all been cobbled up. I'm sure it didn't come from the factory that way. Alright, let me get the alternator. Show you more. Alright, let's get this bolt out of here. Here, you hold that. This on here. Ooh. Something like that. Maybe how this goes on there. I don't know. It don't look right to me. But that is the way it came off. But um, I suppose it would hold it over there. I was trying to figure out why. It wouldn't hold it over there, but I think it will. I have to get me some of them nifty 18 volt tools like I see everybody using. Tighten that down all the way yet. Snug it up a little. Okay. And let's get our one that we fixed here out. She just came right on back out of there just like nobody's business. Slide that up there. And you have to raise this up a little. Probably why they broke that off because if you don't loosen up that bolt over there by the water pump and you try to screw this thing around, it will strip out on you. And you know what? That ought to have a washer. Um, I think I'll go get a washer. All right, hold on. Be right back. All right, got me a washer here. Maybe it don't need one. You can tell me. Just type that in down there at the bottom. Make a comment. But I think I would feel better if it had a washer on it. And since I'm the one here doing it right now, and you guys are just here watching, we're going to put one of them on there. Okay. Now, again, I ain't going to tighten that up yet. Let's get this all plugged in back here. The green one went here. And the red one went up here. And this little duker here 
has a screw on. That thing is supposed to be somewhere in there. Get my little ratchet thing out here. Don't want to dump them on the ground. That'd be a mess. Okay, so I just got the nut in the socket there. And let's just get that back in there. Oops. Gonna knock them over yet. Okay. little clip goes, but apparently it don't go there, so anyway, I don't know. It'll find its way home somewhere. Okay, there's that. And so let's put the... I'm going to shut the lid on that before I drop it. I'm talking about this, with all these little pieces in it. I don't want to pick those up. I've been there and done that. I've got that t-shirt, too. Got two or three of them. All right, let's see if we can get this up on here. Oh yeah, she is gonna go. Now we're gonna pull this up like that. It looks like it's nice and true. Seems to be all right. Okay. Well, let's get a wrench on that. Let's see what size is that. It's probably half inch now since I put a different size head bolt on it. Oops. Actually, I don't know what size head bolt was on it before. But I do know what's on it now. It's a 5 sixteenths with a half inch head on it there. So we're just going to snug that up. I ain't trying to, you know, torculate anything too heavy. And we're going to tighten this one back down because remember we loosened this one up. <coughs> going to tighten him down a little. One of these, at least on Ford, is open to the water jacket, so I don't know if it is on these dodges or not. There we go. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, that that looks guaranteed to stay on there for a minute. Now, before we give this old girl a a whirl and see if it's going to run. I noticed that it ain't got no doogee whopper there in it. So, we are going to put in an air cleaner. Alright, show you more. Okay. Alright, so it looks like the flavor of the day is Pure Later. And that is uh, pureoil.com. Well, I'll be darned. Uh, pure oil, I never heard of that. Is that kind of like... Uh, you know, back in the day, Havlin was the motor oil to use when you had a vehicle that was burning oil because it would smell like you'd just been through the beekeeper's house with the sweet smelling, and, you know, true, the true meaning of motor honey, Havlin. But uh, I don't even think they make that kind of oil anymore. I ain't seen it for years. Probably don't. Everything's got to change. I don't know if this is the right air cleaner for this or not. It don't look right for a Dodge. But, I guess it could be, but it's got this heat riser thing over here. You may not be able to even see that. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the... You tell me. Uh-oh, what's this? That's a spring. That don't look good. What's that supposed to be on? There's the... Somebody's tried to rig up a choke cable. Hell, this thing may never run. I don't know. All right. You guys watch that right there, and I'll give this a whirl, and let's see if we get any fuel up in this thing. All right. Show you more. All right, let's see what we got here.
pumping any fuel up in there? Oh yeah, looks like we're getting some. Well, that's better than what we had before. I should have gave her a little drink of something. All right, let's try it again. She's running. Uh-oh, she died. But the gas is staying in there, and that's what wasn't happening before. All right, let's see if we can get her going. it up a little bit. Look at the bottom of the belt, how it's bouncing. So let's tighten her up a little bit. All right, show you more. All right, let's get you down here. I tightened that up. Let's see what happens now. Okay, well, I tell you, uh, it's charging, showing a good charge in there, so maybe maybe the charging system does work. Uh, we must not have tore it up any, so that saved us a little money, maybe, for now. I don't even know if this thing will pull itself around, so let me get you set out here and we'll see if it even moves. Alright, show you more. show you but I got my new wheels put on there not my new wheels that's the wheels that came with it but the new tires I found some online 
had to drive about 50 miles to get them, but they're almost new. They still they still have the little tits kind of right on the edge here. Came off of a newer Jeep. The guy bought a new Jeep and drove it about 10,000 miles and put on new wheels and tires. So, and they were the size I was looking for. So, anyway, all right. Well, I hope you learned something today with this thing. Uh, don't be afraid to work on them. I'm not perfect at what I do, but you know, I got a few tools and and uh, you know, if we don't save this old junk, it's going to be gone. And I don't like history being erased. So, anyway, sorry about the wind. Thanks for Gosh, it just blew over my tripod. <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks for tuning in. And I think I'm going to head inside. It looks like it's going to rain. Nasty. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye. Do you find it that hard to believe that all the wrong is done? And it has not always been me. Say, whoa. Do you feel it's that important to win? Though you know I'm why you. Could have never been. I said, Do you find it that hard to conceive where you thought me blind? I see, I do see. I said, Whoa, do you know that confidence is king and the truth? Is